Welcome to the Kennedy Report. I'm Kennedy Hall. Can women be priests? Fulton Sheen does not think so. The church does not think so, and it's technically speaking a theological impossibility. But it is something that's been debated for a long time. And no matter how many times popes and theologians come down and say, no, this is not going to happen, it's still something that's debated. We're going to talk about that in just a second here. But first, I want to thank our sponsor over at Noble Gold. Now, over the years, you've probably tried different investments in stocks and mutual funds. So you know they can be volatile and unpredictable. But with inflation running at its highest rate for 40 years, do you want volatility and uncertainty? Being able to sleep at night knowing your investment isn't about to crash is worth its weight in gold. Pun intended. And speaking of gold, if you've been jumping from one investment to the next, a gold IRA with Noble Gold is perfect for you. A reliable hedge against inflation just fell in your lap. With gold, you shield your gains from taxes, you keep the real value of your wealth, you own a global asset, something tangible, and you can help protect your wealth against an economic crash. There's nothing not to like. And this month for every IRA above 20K, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a thank you. That is a cash value to it. Call 1-877-646-5347 now. Call that number to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. You can find all the information for that in the links in the description of this video. Thank you again to Noble Gold. In this time of uncertainty economically, it is nice to know that there is something certain to hang your hat on. Well, one of the things, or one of the men who was uh, someone who we could ascribe certainty to in a theological sense in the past, we could metaphorically hang our hat on the things that he had to say about important issues in the church was Fulton Sheen. He dealt with this idea that women could not be priests. And uh, before we go to that video, because I'm not going to speak too long here, I want to give him, there's actually like a four minute clip. So we're going to end this episode watching it because he says it better than I do. Um, but one of the things you realize when you try to talk to people about this idea of being a woman priest, you realize that when somebody is at the point where they're suggesting this idea that a woman should be, a woman should be able to be a priest, I would say it's a certainty that they don't really believe Catholicism in the first place. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So I used to work in Catholic education for a lot of years. And obviously people who work in Catholic education, although it's dwindling, although, but many of them do uh, enjoy the fact that they're Catholic. They'll say that they are Catholic. Uh, but often they uh, admittedly reject some of the dogmas of the church, whether it's gay marriage or abortion or... Um, uh, you know, women priests or, you know, divorce and remarriage, receiving Holy Communion, that sort of thing. You know, whatever it is, they'll enjoy the traditions, they'll enjoy the cultural heritage, they'll enjoy the art and the um, events and things like that, because those things are important to people, even on a just natural sense. Okay, I understand that. But when it comes time to it, people will reject the actual dogmas of the faith to believe in something that they would just prefer to believe in otherwise. And this is I think always the case when somebody is bringing up the idea of female priests. It is an established dogma of the Catholic Church that men are priests. It will never be the case theologically that it is ever possible to ordain a female priest. It just can't happen. Um, one of the reasons is, is because the priest speaks in persona Christi in the person of Christ. Uh, Christ is a man, therefore uh, sharing in that, in that activity of priests and administering sacraments. The church believes that men are men and women are women, and they can't share in those activities together in the same way. Um, in the same way that we have fathers are men and mothers are women, uh, we can't say the spiritual father is a woman either. So, you know, these things are established. John Paul II, he wrote an excellent letter called Sacer Ordinatio Sacer Sacerdotalis. Um, and it is an incredible letter. I know I've been critical of John Paul II in other places, um, but this letter is itself a really good letter. It's a very sound doctrinal statement. There's no possible way for a woman to be a priest. It is just not something that can ever happen. But theological arguments, they don't work with people who don't believe the dogmas of the church. You know, if I say, well, so-and-so wrote it in a catechism and he's the Pope, 
if they've already decided to reject things in catechisms when it comes to other moral issues, this sort of argument has no sway over a mind that is not an orthodox Catholic mind. It just doesn't. It's just a fact. So I believe that there is a way to speak about why men only men can be priests and why women cannot be priests in a way where you sort of circumvent the strict nature of dogma and apologetics and you get at the heart of what a priest is and what a woman is. Because here's the thing. If somebody wants to be a Catholic but wants there to be female priests, even though we would say that person is probably in error or maybe even a heretic, there is something about the Christian story, the Christian reality that is appealing to them, whether it's the forgiveness of Christ or the place of the Virgin Mary or whatever. I mean, there's something that's pulling them in because if they're deciding they want to be Catholic over something else, even if Catholic in a wrong way, they still want to be Catholic for some reason, if, if that makes sense. So I think there is a way to talk to somebody who is in error but of goodwill um, about the meaning of the priesthood, who Christ was, how it was established, and the significance of that in the church. I cannot do that the way that Fulton Sheen can. Only he can. So we're going to watch a longer clip here. This is about four minutes long. Uh, so uh, pay attention because it is probably the strongest exposition on the reality of the inherent masculine nature of the priesthood, but in a way that is uh, eminently complementary to the feminine receptivity of members of the church. It's just astonishing. Uh, I don't do it justice. So without further ado, here is Fulton Sheen on why women cannot be priests. Who is on the cross? The new Adam. Who's beneath the cross? Mary, the new Eve. What's going to happen? Nuptials. The consummation of a marriage. So the blessed Lord looks down to his mother at the foot of the cross and says to the spouse, woman, and then to John, there's your son. And to John, the son of Zebedee, there's your mother. This idea of marriage and nuptials which is carried over into the New Testament, is now initiated in the New Testament on the cross. As St. Augustine put it, the heavenly bridegroom comes from out his chambers with the presage of the nuptials before him. He comes to the marriage bed of the cross and there consummates his marriage not on with pleasure but with pain and unites himself to the woman forever. In other words, the Blessed Mother stands for the beginning of the church. Our Lord is the head of the church. He's the spouse, she's the bride. And there's already the beginning of the church, beginning of a family, it's John. Then at Pentecost, what do you find? You find how the family has grown. There are 120 there at Pentecost. And the Blessed Mother and the Apostles in the midst of them all. So that you married people, when you came to the altar, you were told. The bridegroom was told, you stand for Christ. And the bride was told, you stand for the church. So what we're happening, what is we see here, therefore, is the beginning of the church in which Christ now is the head of the church the heavenly bridegroom the blessed mother is the beginning of the church the new Eve 
And as many children came from Eve, so many children now are coming from Mary. And this is the reason why women cannot be priests. Because it is man who gives the seed. The woman says, I mean, our blessed Lord says, the word is the seed. For example, I am giving you the word now. I'm giving you the word that is the seed of life. That was what Christ was doing. And who was the Blessed Mother? The Blessed Mother receives the seed, the woman receives the seed, nourishes it, fosters it, brings it to life, educates it, loves it. There is no question here of inferiority or superiority. Let's get it straight. It's a differentiation of function. Man provides the seed, the woman receives it. And this originated at the cross. And never, never call the church an establishment. It's the body of Christ. It's his bride. When we get to heaven, what, what, where are we going to be? We're going to be at a marriage. The nuptials of the bridegroom and the bride. And we even have in the book of Revelation a description of how the bride or the church is dressed in the linen of the prayers of the saints. Then there's the description of the way the heavenly bridegroom Christ is dressed. Wow. I don't think, I don't, is it possible to explain that in a more profound way than Fulton? I don't know. It, um, everything he said there makes perfect sense. It's almost like the nature of the priesthood is built into the cosmos or something like that. There's the masculine and feminine nature of existence itself. And the priest serves a particular role. Anyway, beyond the theological reasoning for it, which is very sound, perhaps if you have someone in your life who thinks that women can be ordained and they're not really hearing the theological or dogmatic arguments, perhaps they'll be able to hear something from Fulton Sheen said in a more philosophical or poetical sense. Maybe. I don't know. I hope that helps. If you've liked this video, please like this video, subscribe to this channel. Visit the links in the description to help us continue to grow. The uh, signing up for the patrons and the donations has been wonderful. It's why we keep improving, and we thank everyone for that. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time.